friends, today I am going to discuss about electronic fetal heart rate monitor. Electronic fetal heart rate monitors continuously monitor fetal heart rate as well as uterine contractions. Normally, we perform this during labor. So, these electronic fetal heart rate monitors will record fetal heart rate as well as uterine contractions. And this can be performed in two ways, external and internal. Mainly in external monitors, it has two transducers. Out of that, one will monitor fetal heart rate and the another will monitor uterine contractions. So these two transducers will be kept over the maternal abdomen and that will monitor uh, fetal heart rate as well as uterine contractions simultaneously. Whereas in internal fetal heart rate monitor, it has one electrode and this particular electrode will be kept over the scalp of the fetus. Okay, so this particular electrode will be inserted into the uterus and the electrode will be kept over the scalp. So before inserting this electrode, there should be a pervaginal per examination performed and you should be able to identify or locate the fetal head so that the amnion which is a membrane which is covering the fetus as well as the amniotic fluid. So once the amnion is ruptured, you will be able to identify and locate the fetal head. So without rupture of membrane, you will not be able to insert this electrode into the uterus. Clear? So the electrode will be kept over the scalp of the fetus and that will monitor accurate fetal heart rate. So when we compare between these two things, external and internal, <clears throat> internal fetal heart rate monitor will monitor accurate fetal heart rate but it has minor complications. But external is not having any of complication and that will also monitor fetal heart rate as well as uterine contractions. Okay, so now what happens during contractions? What is the expected finding of fetal heart rate during uterine contractions? Normally, during uterine contraction, what happens? The uterine muscles get constricted the same way the blood vessels which is there inside will also get constricted and the placental blood vessel may also get constricted. So there will be chances to get a, a decreased blood supply or there will be variation in blood supply towards the fetus. And how does the fetus compensate? towards these changes during contractions. That will be identified in this monitoring. Okay, so fetal heart rate continuous at a monitor chamber. You will be get a clear picture how much oxygenated blood is receiving by the baby or how much does the baby receive oxygenated blood during uterine contractions. Normally, during uterine contraction, there will be acceleration of fetal heart rate. So what is the normal fetal heart rate? Normal fetal heart rate is 120 to 160 beats per minute. Normal fetal heart rate is 120 to 160 beats per minute. During contraction, what we expect is, what is the expected finding? That is slight elevation of fetal heart rate. Okay? That means 50 number. Okay, now or number. That means from 60 you can add 50. Okay, so 50 digit elevation of fetal heart rate. That is called as acceleration. So 50 number of acceleration will be expected and that will last for 15 seconds. Okay, so during uterine contractions, what happens normally? There will be slight elevation or an acceleration of fetal heart rate. That is an expected finding. Fine. So during uterine contraction, the fetal heart rate will increase. So 
let me just draw if this is a con uh, uterine contraction suppose this is the starting of uterine contraction and this is the end of uterine contraction and this is the peak of uterine contractions fine so what happens in fetal heart rate the fetal heart rate will also slight there will be changes slight acceleration okay and it returns to normal and then when reach in the uterine contraction there will be slight acceleration of 15 and it may last for 15 seconds and it returns to normal and then there will be a slight elevation so slight elevation of heart rate which is uh, giving a clear picture that the fetus is receiving adequate amount of oxygenated blood or the fetus is in a well manner or the fetus is completely active okay about slight elevation of fetal heart rate or percentage in another <coughs> the fetus is good or fetus is active what you expect is also a slight elevation or acceleration clear so you have to just remember this what is the normal fetal heart rate it is 120 to 160 what do you expect during fetal heart rate monitoring slight elevation of fetal heart rate and it should only ex, uh, like last for 15 seconds okay so 15 or 15 okay so that is a positive thing okay so <clears throat> when you monitor fetal heart rate you have to uh, check what are the negative when you give when you get a uh, like result of any of graph or any of ecg or something anything okay but you test in the result you have to compare what is the normal and what is the abnormal so abnormal interpretations are these decelerations okay so what you expect is an acceleration but what are the <coughs> negative thing or interpretation those are decelerations what is deceleration it is decrease of fetal heart rate and this deceleration can be divided into three that is early deceleration late deceleration and variable deceleration early deceleration late deceleration and variable deceleration okay so let me just explain what is early deceleration early deceleration is the deceleration take place before the peak of uterine contraction normally what happens uh, in this electronic fetal heart rate monitoring in the uh, in the result there will be two graphs one denotes uterine contraction and another denotes uh, ECG that means fetal heart rate okay so uh, one denotes uterine contraction and another is denoting fetal heart rate okay so where I have not uh, shown any fetal heart rate here okay so what is early deceleration in early deceleration what happens the deceleration is usually happening after the peak of uterine contraction okay so this is uterine contraction this is the starting of uterine contraction this is the end of uterine contraction and this is considered as the peak of uterine contraction okay so here deceleration that means decrease of fetal heart rate is happening just before the peak of uterine contraction okay so let me just draw that if this is a uh, fetal heart rate like a uh, heart rate rhythm okay and this is the peak and deceleration starts before the peak of uterine contraction so deceleration starts and returns to normal and it no goes normal and before this a peak of uterine contraction what happens the deceleration starts okay this is the <coughs> rhythm okay. and the early deceleration is considered as normal okay and this is because of compression of head on cervix or pelvis so this is because of compression of head over the cervix or the pelvis and this is quite normal okay and second is late deceleration so what happens in late deceleration the deceleration take place after the peak of uterine contraction okay again this is the starting of contraction this is the peak of contraction this is the end of contraction starting peak end starting peak and this is the end okay 
So what happens in late deceleration? The deceleration take place after the peak of uterine contraction. If this is a rhythm, this is after the peak and the deceleration happens after the uterine contraction. Okay? And yeah, this is the peak and what happens? The deceleration take place after. Okay? Usually what we can expect is normal slight deceleration will be an expected thing during the peak of uterine contraction. Normally, during the peak of uterine contractions, we can expect slight deceleration. It is quite normal. But here what happens? The deceleration happens after the peak of uterine contractions. What is the basic reason for that? That is because of uteroplacental insufficiency. It is because of uteroplacental insufficiency. Because of decreased blood supply towards the fetus due to some problem in the placental circulation. Okay. So this is because of uteroplacental insufficiency. Okay. And this is not normal thing. It requires treatment. Okay. So what treatment is required here? You need to monitor fetal heart rate continuously till it becomes normal and you have to provide oxygenation and you can provide position, you can change the position of the mother, you can provide left lateral position and find out the reason and if it is required hydration and other symptomatic treatment can also be increased. Okay, if patient is receiving uh, any medications or uh, the uh, pitocin or any of medications, you need to check the side effect of medications and you need to find out the basic reason for uh, deceleration and rule out that. Clear? And late deceleration, where the deceleration happens after the peak of uterine contraction and it is because of uteroplacental insufficiency. Okay. And third is variable deceleration. What is variable deceleration? It is quite abnormal deceleration and immediate treatment is also required in variable deceleration. Here, in variable deceleration, the FHR graph is not having any relationship with the uterine contraction. Usually there is a relationship between fetal heart rate and the uterine contractions. What is the relationship? During the peak of uterine contractions, there will be a slight change in uh, deceleration. Okay, slight change in fetal heart rate, that is deceleration. But what is our normal result? Our normal result is this. This is an expected result, that is an acceleration. If there will be slight change in uh, deceleration also, no, no problem. But what happens in variable deceleration, the deceleration is happening. Deceleration is happening even in the relaxation of the uterine muscles. Okay, so there is no relationship between the uterine contraction as well as the fetal heart rate. Okay, so let me draw that. Okay, so there is no relationship between the fetal heart rate and uterine contractions. Okay, so that is indicating variable deceleration and this is because of cord compression, umbilical cord compression. What is umbilical cord compression? Okay, so let me draw that umbilical cord compression. Okay, so I'll draw here. See, this is uterus and here the baby and this is placenta okay and uh, during labor uh, after amniotic rupture or amniotic membrane rupture or <clears throat> once the membrane is ruptured what happens the amniotic fluid comes out okay amniotic fluid or take a do it the pressure the amniotic fluid comes out with a high pressure, okay, towards the gravity. So the baby will also, the fetus will also come down, descent will take place, okay. At that time, what happens? The umbilical cord 
may come out through the vagina. Okay, so the umbilical cord comes out through the vagina. Okay, at the same time, baby the head dum tarot vagina. Okay, so baby's head is also coming down and that might obstruct the umbilical cord. So if this could be a baby's head that might obstruct the umbilical cord and the blood supply will be reduced. Okay, that is denoted in the fetal heart rate continuous monitoring by variable deceleration. Upon umbilical cord compression on the angle, fetal heart rate continuous to monitor variable deceleration. Okay, so this is an emergency where the fetus is not receiving adequate amount of oxygenated blood. It causes multiple complications. So immediately you have to initiate the treatment. Okay. You can provide position, you can administer oxygen for the mother and you need to continuously monitor the fetal heart rate and immediately remove the baby out. Okay, so uh, oxygenation, you have to ensure that the baby is receiving adequate amount of oxygen. So position is important. In case of cord prolapse, you have to take care of that. Okay, and then uh, ensure that the baby is receiving adequate amount of oxygenated blood or the fetal heart rate is adequate. And take measures to take out the or remove the baby or deliver the baby. Clear? So let me just revise this. Electronic fetal heart rate monitoring usually it monitor fetal heart rate as well as uterine contraction together. And in the end of the important night to another because fetal heart rate is not continuous to monitor fetus in an adequate amount of oxygenated blood to receive and normal expectation is slight acceleration okay if acceleration of fetal heart rate that gives a clear picture that the baby is active but even early deceleration is also okay it is okay okay it is a quite normal thing early deceleration but late deceleration and variable deceleration Either and the negative or immediate interventions required are clear. Early deceleration, right? deceleration happens before the peak of uterine contractions. And in late deceleration, what happens? The deceleration happens after the peak of uterine contraction. And variable deceleration, there is no relationship between deceleration of fetal heart rate as well as the, as well as the uterine contractions and you have to just remember what is the cause for late deceleration and variable deceleration late deceleration the basic reason uh, causes uteroplacenta insufficiency and variable deceleration is because of umbilical cord compression okay for international nursing licensing exams you know, usually you will get questions uh, from this so please remember what is early deceleration, what is late deceleration and what is variable deceleration. Okay, and how do we monitor electronic fetal heart rate monitoring which is uh, normally recording with the, by using internal as well as external monitors. You have to just remember that and thank you for watching. Bye, take care.